Hello, my name is Lemonbot, and thank you for joining me today for The Joy of Painting. Today, we will be painting a lemon tree. But before we begin, I would like to thank Queerport for hosting today's art show. This week-long event would not be made possible without the support and organizing of the Queerport team, so I would like to say thank you. If you would like to help support Queerport in making future events, please feel free to donate to the GoFundMe campaign link in the description of this video. Otherwise, let's begin. Now you may look at this canvas and think, Mama, this is garbage. But I will have you know, no matter whether you're a baby queen or a full-blown drag queen like me, we will all be leaving this class with a masterpiece. Okay. So, before we begin, I'd like to show you what supplies we'll need to achieve this masterpiece. First things first, you'll need something to paint on. I will be painting today on this unused 9x12 canvas. If you don't have a new canvas, you can use an old textbook from a college class you attended, or a picture frame from a relative you dislike. Whatever works for you, but what matters is that you have it available and you do not mind putting paint on that thing. You'll also need a palette and some paints. I will today will be using a paper plate and I will be using the following colors. Primary red, primary yellow, primary blue, titanium white, and Mars black. Keep in mind that today I will be using acrylic paints. If you'd like to use a different medium, you may feel free to do so, but it'll be easiest to follow along with the tools that I am using, just so we have the same result. Now, keep in mind, if you use a different medium, our results may not be exactly the same, but don't be discouraged. There are no mistakes in life, only happy little accidents. I also suggest that you have a water cup and some paint brushes. Today, I will be using a variety of brushes, including flat brushes and round brushes. And I'll demonstrate to you how to use those tools in just a moment. I will also be using some paper towels. You can use napkins or an old dishcloth if you'd like. And you'll also notice that I am wearing a lovely apron. You may not know this, but acrylic paint, as it dries, it can bond to any clothing you may wear. So keep in mind, if you would like to paint, make sure you're wearing things that you are not attached to, unlike myself, as I'm currently sewn into these clothes so they may fit properly. Well then, let's begin. So before we begin, I'd like to show you where you will keep your brushes during this class when you are not using them. First thing I like to do is take my largest flat brush, like so, dip it in some water, just like this, and I'll swirl it in the water and bounce it up and down. I'll then tap the excess water off the edge of the cup. I'm going to start this class by soaking my canvas. It's very important to really prime your canvas to make sure you have a nice, smooth result. And you know what I say. If it ain't wet, honey, I ain't interested. Okay? Don't be too preoccupied with this step. This is really just to let us know that our acrylic will help glide smoothly and evenly across our canvas. Acrylic is water soluble, so this will just help us make sure we achieve a very fine, smooth result for our background, which is where we'll begin. Now I'll show you how to shake your brush. Whenever you need to reshape your brush, what I'd like you to do is take your brush, put it in your water cup, swirl it around, Tap it off the edge of the cup, and then take your napkin, paper towel, or dish rag, and just squeeze those bristles from the base 
through the tip until you get a nice, clean, flat brush, just like so. Good as new. Now, you may notice as well that I'm starting with just primary colors as well as black and white. Luckily, we'll be able to mix some colors to achieve the desired result for a lemon tree painting. And I'm going to be starting today with the background. Now in this class, we're going to be working from our background layers into our foreground layers to achieve the result that I aim to get. Now keep in mind, there are no mistakes in art, only happy little accidents. So let's begin. I'd like to start by getting a nice light blue skyline across the back of my canvas. So where I would like to begin is by taking a little bit of blue onto my brush and a little bit of white on the other corner of my flat brush. Now, if you look at your brush, you'll notice that it is there is a wider dimension and a thinner dimension, a narrower dimension. So I can take the wider side of my brush and take my canvas. And starting at the top of my paint, I just like to go back and forth, side to side. Just like so. And I'm going to carry this down into the top two thirds of my canvas. Now this is a rough estimate, so do not feel you need to achieve an accurate result. This is about what you aim to achieve and what looks good to you. And keep in mind, while I may be looking to get a blue sky, perhaps where your lemon tree is, the sky is green or purple, or maybe there is no sky. Maybe you live in space and there's just a constant void of silence that rings in your ears and terrifies you in your sleep. That is fine. As long as your art speaks to you in the way you like it to, that's all that matters. Another thing I will suggest if you're painting on a canvas such as I am, is that you take your paint and paint along the sides of your canvas as well. This is what we call framing the canvas. Now there's nothing quite as relaxing as painting a beautiful skyline behind a lemon tree in the last week of October, which is when this is currently being filmed and aired. That looks good. Now you'll notice that your paint should still be a little wet on your canvas. You'll notice that it's wet because as paint sits on a canvas, if it gleams and shines in the light, that means it's still wet. Wet paint is active paint, which means if you add more paint on top of it and other colors, those colors will still be able to mix and meld together, which can achieve some very interesting results. But as it dries down, it becomes less and less able to achieve that result of mixing and blending with those dry colors. We're going to use this knowledge to our advantage. So while the paint is still wet, and active, I'm going to take my brush. It has not been rinsed out yet. I'm going to dip into a little bit of white paint. And you'll notice as I'm dipping it, I'm sort of breaking the paint off the side of my palette, just like so. This way I can keep that flat edge of my brush intact. 
Now I'll be taking the tip of my brush, that is just the tip, and I'll be creating some cloud shapes for my skyline. I'll be doing this by going side to side on my canvas, just like so. And once I've got a good cloud there, I can create a little hump. And you'll notice that the white that I had on my bristles on my paintbrush have very subtly melded into the wet paint that is on my sky. This way I get to pick up some nice blue variation in my cloud color. So my cloud is in pure white. Now, if I feel I have too much blue paint in my brush, I can rinse it out by bouncing and swirling the bristles in my cup, just like so. Tap off the excess water. And remember to shape your brush by pinching and pulling. Voila, good as new. Now I will go back, take in some more white paint on my bristles. And put in a few more clouds in my skyline. Now remember, this may be how my clouds look, but I've never been outside before, and I still wonder what clouds actually look like. These are the clouds that manifest in my dreams, so make your dreams a reality by putting those clouds of your reality onto your canvas. So class, now that I've finished completing my skyline to my desired effect, I'd like to let this part of my canvas dry. So I can sit here patiently, as I'm a very patient person, or I can be impatient and use this handy little device called a hair dryer. What I will do is I will take my hair dryer and dry my canvas until all the shiny spots on my canvas disappeared and my canvas becomes nice and matte. A little tip, be sure if you have any lumpy paint on your canvas that you do your best to smooth that out before drying as lumpy paint does not dry very easily and that can achieve some very unwanted results later on in your painting. Keep in mind, intention is key. Mo well, class, the next thing I'd like to do is begin on the hill that I'll be putting on my canvas. This hill will take up the bottom portion of my canvas right over here, and that hill will be where our tree sits later. So I'm going to start by taking my brush. I'm going to start by dipping into a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of my blue. Now you'll notice that I'm not thoroughly mixing my colors together. When you work paints together, the more they work into each other, the more they become one solid color. But the less you work your colors together, the more you'll see those different variations and tones come through. If you like solid colors, then just keep working those colors until you get a nice solid color of your liking. But if you like variation, try and hold back and don't work your paint as much. This can achieve some interesting texture and variation that might make your painting look a little more interesting. This is how you can take your painting from Kelly to Beyonce. So the next thing I'm going to do, same thing as I did with my skyline earlier. 
I'm just going to take my brush and go back and forth. But you'll notice this time around, I'm actually using an arching method, sort of like painting a rainbow. Now, as I go, I'm going to dip back into either of my yellow or my blue. And continue as follows. Now, when you get to the top of your painting, what I'd like you to do is take that tip of your brush, remember, just the tip, and you can use that tip to trace out the top of your hill on your canvas, just by taking your, that tip and just moving in one swift motion. This is called a, a contour. So by contouring on your canvas, you create one smooth line that allows you to very clearly define that shape. If you need to practice your contouring, you can do so on your face or on a clean sheet of paper. You can also practice contouring on the back of your canvas if you'd like to. I will demonstrate that technique again on this sheet of paper here. By taking a little bit of my paint on my bristles and maintaining that line and just pulling gently along the canvas. Notice how smooth that line is. It's not rough at all, and it's very consistent. Now, if I hatch my line in, that can create some interesting texture, but it takes away from the smoothness of the line. I can also try using the flat edge of my brush. But you'll notice that tends to break away a little more as well. Try and use these different understandings of how your brush can work to your advantage to achieve your desired result in your painting. Let's continue. Now you'll notice as I'm painting this hill that I've kept the top of my hill bright with yellow tones and the bottom of my hill deep and dark with blue tones. This is so that I understand that all the light is hitting the very top of my hill. But keep in mind, this might be how I like my hills to look, but maybe your hills look different. Let's all for a moment suspend our disbelief and think that hills do not exist. So by putting them on your canvas, you are literally bringing them into existence. You are an omnipotent god, a deity. You are powerful beyond your own recognition. Be very careful with this power, as you can do lots of harm to the world, but also lots of good. Use that power to your advantage. And remember to wrap that paint around the edges of your canvas. This painting is looking pretty good so far, if I say so myself. What I'd like to do next is take my brush and rinse it off a bit.
this brush has gone from green to Yas Queen, or should I say clean? Now for this next part of my canvas, I'd like to take my other flat brush, a smaller one, such as this one. I'm going to paint in a few smaller shrubs around the top of my hill, just to add a little more dimension, a little more depth, and to create some interesting variety to my canvas and my painting. Keep in mind, the simpler you keep your canvas, the fewer focal points there will be for you to focus on. So if you want to keep a simple painting, don't add as many elements. I'll be taking this small square brush here. And I'm going to start by taking a little bit of my yellow and blue and mixing it right here on my paint plate. But I'll also be adding a little bit of white as well. This white will help to solidify the other paint, giving it a bit more of a flat but solid finish. And now I'm going to put a few little shrubs and bushes all around my hill. I'll put some at the top, but I might some put some. I will put some at the top, but I might put some behind my hill. I might put some at the front of my hill, wherever I feel it needs a little bush. Keep in mind, some of us have bigger bushes that are a lot fuller, and some of us might have smaller bushes. Some of us might not have a bush at all. But remember, there is no right or wrong way to keep your landscape. To paint my shrubs, I'll be using a similar technique to what I did for my clouds. Whereas I take my brush with my paint loaded and I swirl my shape, my shrub shape, onto my canvas. Like so. You'll notice. My hill is still a little wet, and that paint is still a little active on my canvas, which means that I can still pick up some of those yellow tones as well. But it creates some very interesting variety and texture out of my paint. As you're adding your shrubs, try not to put them in one place as you're working on them. You should bounce around with your shrubs so that it creates a very interesting variety of colors and textures. That way, if your paint colors tend to mix in different ratios and different tints and hues as you're going, it doesn't look too unsettling or too unintentional. Just swirling my bush. There's a happy little bush right there on my canvas. I'm just going to take one more little shrub and put it closer to the bottom of my canvas, just to fill up some of that space. Now remember, as you put that paint down, if you need to deepen it up, feel free to add a bit more of that blue to your brush and go right back into that bush, that shrub, to make it a little darker and a little deeper. I'm now going to rinse out my brush.
Now I'd like to sit and let my canvas dry a little bit more thoroughly before I move on to my next step. Now, as we wait for our canvases to dry before we work on the next step, I'd like to thank you all again for attending Queer Report this week for all our digital events. This is where we are currently in our painting process. You'll see here that my canvas is still a little wet, so I like to take some time to allow it to dry. While I'm waiting, I like to think about some fun things, such as all the fun events that we have planned for Queer Report this week, including this Saturday's drag show featuring all sorts of drag artists from around the area. I would also like to remind you all, feel free to donate to our GoFundMe campaign link in the description below to help support future events from Queer Report. Now that our canvases have dried considerably, I'd like to move on to the next part of the painting, the tree. Now, for this part of our painting, you can use your flat brush or your round brush if you so desire. I personally will continue to use my flat brush, but if you'd like to use your round brush, if you feel that might be easier for you, that is fine as well. I will remind you, if you plan on using your flat brush, to keep that tip of the brush, just the tip, all on your canvas in one continuous stroke to get a nice, even, smooth line. I'm going to start by mixing a brown on my pink palette. So as we currently don't have any brown on our paint plate, we will have to mix that brown ourselves. To do that, I will be combining a small amount of yellow, blue, and red, and this will neutralize into a brown tone, like so. Voila, we've made brown. Now keep in mind, you will need a good bit of this brown paint to create a solid impression on your canvas. So if you need to go back and create several layers of this to make sure it looks solid, that's fine. You can also cheat this by adding a little bit of white to your brown so that it helps to solidify the color and make it nice and flat. Now keep in mind, Adding white to your paint, while it does make it more solid, it will also lighten that tone. So you may have to balance that out by adding a little more of your other colors. Now I'm going to rake the paint off the side of my plate, and I'm going to put the tip of my brush, just the tip, on my canvas, like so. Now. This is where you will determine what type of tree you will have. Me personally, I would like to have a lemon tree, and so I would like to make one very narrow trunk right in the center of my canvas. But keep in mind, as your canvas is at home, and I currently cannot access your home from my computer, you have the liberty and range to create as many trees as you'd like in whatever shape or form you may have. Keep in mind, planting trees on your canvas may not qualify as community service in your neighborhood, so please check your city's bylaws to see if you qualify. Now to create our tree trunk. I will take the tip of my brush and put it on my canvas in one smooth motion. This is the beginning of a tree. I will now flatten my brush with some more paint. I will take my brush, I will pull and twist off to the side to create some nice extra limbs. Some happy little limbs for my happy lemon tree.
Now when I'm at the bottom of my tree, I'm going to take the flat edge of my brush and as I'm keeping it on my canvas, I will slowly twist the brush in my fingers to let it taper off into the root of the tree. Like so. And feel free to reload your paint palette with more paint as necessary. I'm now going to rinse out my brush. Now, if you feel as you're getting to, if you feel you're getting to a point where your paint bristles are a little overloaded with paint, please feel free to rinse your brush out in your cup. Add off the excess water. Pinch and pull your brush through your rag to dry your bristles, and begin again with a fresh load of paint. Remember, your paintbrush can only handle so many loads of paint at a time, so please feel free to rinse and reload as often as needed. Now class, I'd like to begin filling in the canopy of my tree. To do this, I will be creating some more green with my yellow and blue colors from before. And right now and then, I will add a little bit of white to add some variation and some texture to my canopy of my tree. I'm still using my small square brush. Now you'll notice I'm working in small swirling motions to help fill out some small bunches of leaves on my tree. Try and avoid making a shape as you add in your leaf punches. Remember, it's okay to have lumps and variation in your shapes as well as your colors.
It looks like our laundry is just about done. So now I like to let our canopy dry a little bit longer as we think about our lemon. Now remember class, as I'm painting these lemons onto my tree, keep in mind that there are many lemons in the world. Many of them look very different. Many of them might be yellow, some may be green, some might be orange, some might be blue. I'm not quite sure, but feel free to add whatever kind of shape or colored lemon you'd like for your tree. Perhaps your tree is barren and there are no lemons currently on your tree as it may not be in season. This is fine as well. Not all of us are up to bearing fruit of the lemon tree. Now to create my lemon shapes, I'm going to use a small round brush, which is this one. I'm going to mix together some white and yellow on my palette. The white will help give that yellow a nice solid finish against the deeper tones that were left by the blue and green on my canvas. And now to create my lemon shape, I will make small little footballs, such as so, right there on my canopy. Follow my lead. Now I have one beautiful lemon on my tree. And I will continue to add lemons onto my tree until I feel that they have, they have ripened enough and my tree has blossomed into a beautiful lemon tree. These are quite a few lemons. Feel free to add as many lemons as you'd like onto your lemon tree. Once you've added your lemons to your tree, now you can begin working on finishing touches. For my finishing touches, I will be adding small bits of grass around my tree and my shrubs to add a little more variety and life to the scene.
If you'd like, you can also add a few birds to your scene. I will take a little bit of black onto my brush and put in a few small connected crowns. Some birds over here. Maybe a few birds flying off into this distance as well. And there you have it, a lovely lemon tree. Now the last thing you should do to make sure your canvas is complete is to sign your canvas. Show that you are a true artist who can take credit and accountability for their work. I will take my brush into some paint and put my initials in the bottom corner. And voila, we have slain another day. Now that we've completed this beautiful masterpiece, I'd like to thank Queerport for producing today's show and this week long of digital events. Thanks to contributions such as yours. If you're able, please donate to the GoFundMe campaign link in the description of this video to support future events hosted by Queerport. Before we end today's video, I'd like to share a small song that I've prepared for you. Without further ado, Just a lad of ten, my father said to me, Come here and take a lesson from the lovely lemon tree. Don't put your faith in love, my boy, my father said to me, I fear you'll find that love is like the lovely lemon tree. Lemon tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower is sweet. But the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat. Lemon tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower is sweet. But the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat. One day beneath the lemon tree, my love and I did lie. A girl so sweet that when she smiled the stars rose in the sky We passed that summer lost in love beneath the lemon tree The music of her laughter hid my father's words from me Lemon tree very pretty and the lemon flower is sweet But the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat lemon tree very pretty and the lemon flower is sweet but the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat one day she left without a word she took away the sun and in the dark she'd left behind i knew what she had done She'd left me for another It's a common tale but true A sadder man but wiser now I sing these words to you Lemon tree very pretty And the lemon flower is sweet But the fruit of the poor lemon Is impossible to eat Lemon tree very pretty and the lemon flower is sweet But the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat Play.